Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and it has been a while. It's been about two months since I've done a video in this series and that's because to a large extent I want to convert it into a Mars colonization series and focus on that, have that be a focus and so I'll be starting a Mars colonization series as episode one but we'll be continuing the same save and just wrapping things up here. I might also want to move the series into KSP 1.2.2, figure out how to do that. In order to do that, we need to clear up as much stuff as possible so that, you know, there's not going to be any conflicts. It can't be 1.3.1 because RP0 is not compatible with 1.3.1 unless I can figure out how to make it compatible with 1.3.1. Maybe, maybe just dropping it in and it'll work because Community Tech Tree has been updated and that's the tech tree that RP0 requires. So I'll take a look at that. I'll update it to the highest version uh, that I can manage while still maintaining the same tech tree RP0 and continuing the career. Now, it's going to be interesting because if we focus on Mars colonization, I don't know if we're gonna get enough contracts. So down the road, I might need to figure out how to add Mars specific contracts to the whole system. But for now, that's the plan. So we're gonna continue beyond history until I've wrapped up enough stuff so that we can start with the Mars colonization thing. So that is the idea. Hopefully not too many of our, you know, stations and existing Mars vessels will be messed up. But the first order of business is to bring our Kerbals back home so that I can time warp through to our probe maneuvers. So yeah, we've got all these probes here, the map sats, all these, especially the far-flung Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto ambassadors we need to get to. I hope something is aimed at Pluto somewhere around there. So we need to uh, finish all of that up first and then I can move on, hopefully. So let's get these guys back home. Bill, Loden, and Staley are all in the Apollo Command Module as part of the Orpheus spacecraft. Right now, it's worth noting that this station, with all its appendages, is 152 tons around the moon. And, of course, that's a lot of visiting vessels like the Orpheus, the light lunar landers, uh, this uh, Gemini cabin, which is part of the Lunapod. I, I forget if it had a G or not, but anyway, it's a Lunapod. Anyway, so, yeah, but there, there are substantial things here, including this uh, UKS Pioneer module which has uh, life support recycling. And that brings up another point. Uh, in the new series, I will want to make more mods adapted to RP0, like the USI mods, and also maybe add some of my own mods if I feel necessary. If I feel that there's some gap, like for methane engines, for instance, that I might be able to fill with my own parts, then I will do so. Anyway, let's undock. We have 1,200 meters per second here, so that'll be enough to get back home. Food, water, and oxygen look fine. 18 days. I may, at the end of this, decide to clear up the old spacecraft, like the light lunar landers and the Luna pods, uh, just so that we can make way for newer spacecraft that might be more optimized. Though it's tough to beat the Luna pods with the Gemini cabin that those are pretty lightweight but yeah also I don't know about this truss you might want to send over a replacement truss since that one that one's got some weird business going on maybe we can do better than that we'll see so just some thoughts to clean it up but maybe we'll get rid of the truss and send a new one after we update if that's possible okay so here we go for the trip back home Okay, well, I've always managed to get the re-entry periapsis wrong. It's sort of my thing. I'm going to go with 55 kilometers this time. And we'll see what happens. We do have some fuel to slow down ahead of time. So I'll probably take advantage of that. All right, so here we go. Let's use this fuel to slow ourselves down a bit. But we need to keep a periapsis of 55 kilometers. Let's assume a pitch up of 15 degrees in order to do that hmm 
Can't say Smart ASS is looking like it's controlling this very well. Um, just for accuracy's sake, I'm going to shut down two of the engines. Because I don't want a periapsis increasing or decreasing too much, and I might need to adjust the ignition. Uh, yeah, it's just too wiggly. I'll, I'll just use SAS. Okay, uh, well, the staging is a little bit off. Let's make sure that's right. Okay, uh, did I preserve any fuel by any chance? Because I wanted to use this fuel to turn ourselves to normal, to get rid of the service module. But I read zero delta V, so let's see. Oh, just a little puff, but since I don't have uh, SAS on, that might be enough if we're patient. I think that's Alaska to our left there. Okay, well that right there is good enough for me. Separation. Separation. Okay, we'll let it drift for now. And... Okay, right around here-ish. Let's change the camera. We're going to turn descent mode on. Unlock these fuels. And we want that. And roll zero. Uses a lot of fuel though. Bit excessive. And of course, I'll turn off pitch once we get to about 100 kilometers. It does, the atmosphere doesn't really hold it properly below that. And I have had a situation where the pod does not write itself correctly. It goes nose first in sometimes, so. You want to make sure it doesn't do that and just relying on, you know, the center of mass to write our pod correctly is not sufficient really. Okay. Service module explosion. Pitch is now off. It's a little bit red right now. Still wiggling in yaw is interesting. I'll turn yaw off. Well, let's try techniques for limiting our descent and go a bit sideways. It's amazing how well the roll works considering how hard it is to handle this pod otherwise. Alright, well let's limit g-forces now. Back. Regular. Don't explode now probably not the best way to have handled it, but I've at least learned this lesson, finally. Be patient with me. We are going up, but we're, we're definitely not going to escape or anything. This is probably a healthy thing to do to go up. I generally don't like it when the surface velocity is um, more than a tenth of the altitude. So, that's my general benchmark for when things are going right on descent. So now we're basically safe. Alright. So, that was some successful rolling. Okay. We are... going through the last of it here. Okay, releasing the arrow cap. And arming the parachute. So this will be three Kerbals in, and then there's one remaining on our Spaceport 2 around the Earth. Plenty of food, water, and oxygen there, mind you, but we should bring that crew member back so that we can just focus on our probes that we want to take care of. And splash down. Recover vessel. Okay. Well. Bill did not get any XP even though he spent an inordinate amount of time on the surface of the moon. Loden and Staley though uh, got to level 1. Or actually Staley was ready at level 1, just gained some XP, but still I feel like they should get more XP for doing things that humans have not done, <laughs> you know, I mean, that mean, basically means that all humans are one star 
astronauts, right? None of them could have gotten more. Oh well. Anyway, uh, on to our Kerbal around the Earth. Okay, well at the moment Chadger does not seem to have a ride back down, so we're going to have to launch a mission to bring him back. Fortunately, we always had an Orpheus ready to go, so that's a, a low Earth orbit Orpheus, not an Orpheus 2, which is meant for the moon. So we might send an extra Kerbinaut on it so that uh, that Kerbinaut gets some experience. Interestingly, the low Earth orbit station is lighter than our lunar station, 134 tons though. That doesn't take into consideration that we saw the mass of the lunar station with the Orpheus 2 there. So, but it's got the same messed up solar panel situation though. Might want to think about that. Alright, but yep, time to launch an Orpheus. Okay, so here we are with the Orpheus spacecraft on the Nico 606 with Jandra Kerman, a new pilot who will get some experience hopefully. Um, we are not going to be using KOS because this is a Nico rocket and I reserve KOS for the Fiji rockets and we are lined up and thankfully it is a daytime launch. So here we go, ignition. And launch. Okay, we should have plenty of thrust on the second stage since it's six engines. Here we go. Separation. And ignition. Indeed, just about 1G of acceleration. Launch escape tower jettison. Alright, I let it go a little bit too far here. And shut down. Well, alright, good enough. Separation. Okay. And we might as well get these set up. Obviously not a full tank here because it's only for low Earth orbit missions, but that's a thousand meters per second anyway, so it's fine. Okay, we have entered physics range of Spaceport 2. The rendezvous was very straightforward. We used some Delta V, but just about less than a third of it, so no big deal. And now we're finishing this off, matching velocities, and then moving towards the Spaceport. Lag is pretty tremendous as you might expect. Alright, we are approaching to dock here. I decided not to use Smart ASS to hold negative parallel because it was just wobbling quite a lot. Even after I shifted the fuel, the fuel was originally in here. I shifted it down in the hope that uh, it'd be a little bit more balanced, but that didn't help. Looks like it ought to be good enough. And it is. All right. So time to transfer Chadger to the Orpheus. I wonder where Chadger is. Not in the mobile processing lab. Not there, not there. Nope. <laughs> okay, what, what's left? Oh, probably in this transfer thing. Ah, I see. We probably transferred Chadger from the moon, actually. That's one thing I need to do is make a full-featured station parts with RCS and maybe even built-in solar panels. Uh, sort of like um, Salyut sort of thing. And that'll reduce part count if they're all in one part. It should be possible to make it all one part, so... The docking ports you can't build in, but the rest of it you can, so... I'll take a look into doing that so that uh, in the future when we build space stations we don't have so much like... Of course there are many options for that. There are many mods that have space station parts. But uh, maybe I'll come up with some unique design for it to make it worthwhile. All right, well, uh, we'll take a look. Normally I deorbit around Australia. This wouldn't be... Well, this would be a good time if we... Well, let's just do it. Uh, I would like to splash down in daylight. I'm thinking about that. Australia will be fine. Okay, we are now over Australia and retro. 
And we have to make sure not to crash into the station again. Keeping an eye on that closest approach distance. It should be alright, we're not pointed directly at it. Okay, that should be a fine periapsis for this. Let's turn normal. Okay, good enough. Separation. Separation. And unlocking these fuels. Once it's ready. And surface negative relative velocity, change camera, and descent mode on. Okay, we are currently passing over Florida and we are going to be over the Atlantic. Still 93 kilometers in altitude, but yep, we should be splashing down in the Atlantic. And everything is looking fine. Service module is currently exploding. We are at 70 kilometers and it has been a gentle ride down so far. No, no flame effects even, so we're still waiting on that. I think physical time warp, it's been taking a while. There we go. Finally, some flame effects. Okay, forward heat shield removal. Arming parachute. Parachutes have deployed. And we are at 9 meters per second. Chandra and Chagger are now calm. And just like that, they are going to be back home. If something goes wrong right now, I'm totally going to be like reverting. <laughs> this, it must not go wrong now. Interesting waves. And all right, recover. All right, and yes, Chandra got the two XP. Chagger got six, but Chagger had been around the moon as well. All right, so now we are free to check up on these map sats. Let's just time warp to that. There shouldn't be any other pressing business. I'm not intending to do anything in any other window. This Earth to Mars window probably will just pass by. Okay, just to be safe, we'll check up on Mapsat 2E now, but I will make sure to ignore max temps so that we don't have any explosions due to the RTGs, if there are RTGs, which there probably are. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to be doing this maneuver here and then this 221 here. And it looks like we're hoping for IO, perhaps. But let me just do it as plotted and then we'll figure it out eventually. Perhaps if we set IO, well, it is the target, so. After these two burns, we'll only have a 0.4 degree inclination with respect to IO. Sounds good to me. Considering this is a map sat, so it has the scanner, we want to get into orbit around IO, which will be tricky. Because we don't have that much fuel. We'll probably have to fly by a few times or something. Okay, here we go. Selling the fuel down. And ignition. This is just raising our periapsis up, and then the next burn will correct our inclination with respect to IO. I'm getting the feeling that the game needs a restart. Okay, that'll get us perfectly flat with respect to IO. And we can add that alarm. Let's give ourselves an extra hour before having to pay attention to it. We'll have other things to do in the meanwhile. Alright, Mapsat 1A. Now this map sat is approaching Saturn and we're trying to level it out with respect to, well, probably Titan, right? I mean, Titan would be a reasonable thing to map sat. Though I suppose we could do some of the other moons of Saturn as well. We don't have quite as much Delta V as we had on the other mission. We've only got 4,000. 
But, well, we'll see what we can do. Is there any Saturn contract to be fulfilled? Not really. No, Neptune, Pluto. Did we miss Uranus already? I guess we might have lost a Uranus contract somewhere along the way. Not sure. Thought we had one. We certainly have a lot of Uranus ambassadors. I hope we have a Uranus contract. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, let's focus on this. Maneuver in six days. And this is what it looks like. Let's deploy the survey scanner. Why not? We don't have to start scanning yet. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at, let's say, Titan. We haven't actually targeted Titan yet. This maneuver helps, but it doesn't really solve the entire problem. And we'll keep it loose when we get into orbit. Selling the fuel down and ignition. Okay, our relative inclination with Titan starts to go up there, even though our overall inclination around, around uh, Saturn is going down still. So we'll leave it there. And at our periapsis, we want to just loosely capture. And I don't think we have anything else to do in the meanwhile. We'll... I mean... I don't think... I mean, it's pretty awkward all, overall as far as trying to meet up with any of these moons with that much inclination still left. But we'll see what we can do. And since there's nothing else for us to do for the meantime... Whoa, that's... I just don't know why that's fluctuating so much. Okay, stop that. Though that's a pretty long-term orbit right there. Ah, we'll fix it while we're burning. Alright, so let's just go ahead and get to Saturn Periapsis and do the capture. Well, darn it, we should be able to see Saturn by now. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Going underneath the rings this time. Whoa, camera issues. All right, we'll just expend this stage and that's how much we'll capture. How about that? Retrograde and ignition. 88 day oral period, seems, seems good enough. Separation, we'll give a token puff so that we don't meet that stage ever again. And good. All right, so we will need to make adjustments to this at Apoapsis. So I'm going to create a maneuver node there and add that to the alarms. And we'll take care of that in the next episode. So with that, we've done a few things and we'll continue to deal with all of our outer planet probes. It's mainly that except for Ares Pod G2. So it's all outer planets for the time being. And then I'll see where we go from there. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.